this is Sarah. And this is Rachel. And this is The Ripper Diaries, a podcast where we rip apart episode by episode The Vampire Diaries. Warning, this is a rewatch podcast. We always talk about future episodes, how they relate to this episode, so there are going to be spoilers. Definitely. This week we're talking about season two, episode two, Brave New World. This episode, we another one where we pick up right where we left off. Caroline is in transition to becoming a vampire. She's still mm-hmm. in the hospital. And, yeah, the other teens are up to, uh, like, planning and going to a carnival. Yeah, yeah, normal Mystic Falls yeah, things. there has to be an event. Has to be an event every day. Time. Also, like, clearly that much time has not passed since, like, the yeah. last episode. So it's, like, we went straight into the carnival from the <laughs> yeah. Founders Day events. Like, not even a weekend later, I don't think. Yeah, but. not only that, we also threw in the Mayor Lockwood Memorial. Right oh, the yeah. <laughs> this was, like, a three-day weekend. I don't Weird. know. Some days must have passed, but somehow they really haven't they don't because seem like, they have, yeah. like you said it wakes up litter or caroline wakes up like literally in transition yeah. at the start of this episode she's like in shock and confused so clearly it's like middle of the night after mm-hmm. the events of the last one when Catherine killed her um and she goes to the nurse trying to you know kind of piece together the day she's confused about like what time it is who's visited her yeah. she complains about being hungry and like smelling a certain something Mm -hmm. and you know the nurse is basically like it's the middle of the night go to bed like stop yep um and caroline does manage to uh you know sneak out of her room and follow that certain smell and what does she find but of course um a blood bag of course which she of course manages to steal before the nurse kicks her back into her room and then in her room she just she goes for it she downs the blood bag yeah I was thinking about this. Caroline is probably the person we see go through transition the fastest. Like, yeah. She basically, as soon as she, like, wakes up from dying, mm-hmm. she, tri- like, completes her transition. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it's so wild that she was able to do that. Also, yeah. there's no one guiding her. She was just like, this blood stuff smells <laughs> like it might taste Might good. as well go for it. I don't know. I think a lot of it is attributed to the convenience of waking up in transition in a hospital. True. That makes True. it, like, significantly easier. Because everyone else kind of deals with the, like, do I bite somebody? Like, what what do I do? Yeah. So she had a little bit of ease there. But, yeah, I do think it, it is interesting. And I think it really speaks to, like, Caroline's, you know, eventual life as a vampire. How she does just, like... I don't know. She has such an ease with it. And, like, the fact yeah. that she transitioned off a blood bag is also, like, so interesting for Caroline. Yeah. It, it really set the tone for her, her whole yeah. life as a vampire. Yeah, it did. I, I think, like, um, this could be a whole special episode at some point is, like, the ways in which people turned and who they turned, like, off yeah. of. Because now I'm really, like, hmm, like, Vicky kind of, like, went off, like, this dead body and, like, Elena. Like, that's a yeah. whole other thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> bookmark that idea because there's, there's definitely, definitely something there. Yeah. So um, Stefan, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some. There's <laughs> yeah. really something there. Yeah. But anyway, so she she goes off of a blood bag again. Really interesting. And at this point, I think she's like so early in transition. She's not even having like those memories yeah. yet that like of what is even going on to her. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. She's pretty different than everyone else. Um, but we do pick up again the next morning. Bonnie and Elena are at the school. Yeah. They're prepping this carnival thing. They're debriefing about the Catherine situation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Bonnie's really going on about how it's so creepy that Catherine and Elena are, like, literally the same person. Like, yep. it's not even, like, how a family member would look similar to you. It's, like, yeah. truly it's like, same person. No, twins. Identical twins. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, Elena obviously is just, like, I don't want to talk about this. Um, you know, because they also segue into Damon killing Jeremy and, like, how that all went down. And, yeah. then, again, Elena's, like, none of this. Yeah, no D word. No D word. <laughs> That's the – she literally doesn't even say his name this episode. It's no yeah. D word. Um, and so, like, you know, she just says, like, I, I want the human stuff right now. Like, yeah. I just want to be focusing on the carnival and you know just doing this fun normal normal stuff i need normal yeah um very much not having any normalcy stefan and jeremy are then in the they're in the high school while i guess this carnival planning is going on which i yeah. guess the carnival's in like the parking lot of the yeah. mystic falls high school i don't know but jeremy or stefan right in front of everyone like students 
other students are walking by. He's like, hey, Jeremy, here's some vervain. Yeah. You can use it to ward off vampires. Yeah, it's super poisonous to vampires. <laughs> yeah. Here's also how you can kill vampires. Yeah, I know. The subtlety, they were like, eh. Yeah, there is none. Granted, Jeremy did die last night yep. via a vampire. But yeah, so he, he needs to know, but it doesn't seem like the right venue for yeah, that. Yeah, could have pulled him aside in the parking lot or something. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but Jeremy's like pretty cocky about the whole thing. He's like, you're pretty confident telling me all the ways I could kill you. Like, Stefan's okay, like, Jeremy. if I thought you were going to kill me, we'd be having a totally different discussion, which again kind of proves from the last episode. Stefan might be off of his like aggression kick, but he's ready to fight anybody he at any given time. Yeah, no, at Stefan least threaten. Looking for a fight. Always, always. <laughs> at least at least threatening. I think he enjoys yeah. the threatening part for sure. I think he does, yeah. He's had a little taste and now he can't let go. Yeah. But, you know, they're pretty good. Like, I... I Jeremy is pretty well um, balanced, I would say, considering that he died yeah. last night. But he does yeah. say, you know, he's like, I, like, died last yeah, night. He's like, like, I'm this not. This is weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so Elena comes up to, you know, give them their assignments for the day. And Jeremy leaves. And Elena and Stefan start catching up and reiterating again that this whole Damon situation and that Elena does not want to acknowledge his existence mm-hmm. and that she, again, normal high school girl the kind of yes. girl who gets kissed by her boyfriend on top yep. of the um ferris wheel yeah they That's... have their their seasonly conversation <laughs> yeah. about how they just want to be like normal yeah girl and boy couple high school dating couple yeah Se- seasonly is generous i would say like three <laughs> episodes like, like every, every three, three episodes, episodes. No, that's, that's true. stephan alina's whole thing is just wanting that, to be yeah, normal we just want to be normal damon meanwhile is at the lockwood house meeting with carol yeah. who Ask him to be the head of the council. Yeah, yeah. So Carol is going to step up. She's going to be interim mayor because, yeah. of course, that just passes, like, yeah. you know, to your spouse. Yeah, it's a family thing. Yeah, it's a family, a family job. Thing. It's inherited for some reason. And, yeah, so since she can't be the head of the council, which I guess I didn't really realize it was just Carol as the head of the council. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know. even know there was a head of the council. I didn't think there was a head either. I kind of just thought they were... A group. Yeah. They were just a group of people who yeah. were... Yeah. Makes sense that but, you need a head, but yeah. yeah. So, yes, she's going to... she's taking on the mayor role which is obviously going to be very busy yeah so damon has to step in and he accepts of course yeah. her offer <laughs> of course he is more than willing to do his part to yep. protect this town from vampires of course literally lol okay yeah, damon he got him he's yeah. fully in but to be fair that is basically what he's doing anyway because it, he's drinking from yeah. a blood bag like he is not actually harming anybody anymore it's true yeah and Catherine very much is willing to and he's doing anything he can to get rid of Catherine at this point so yeah is he playing them or are they playing him i don't it's know it's hard to say they're probably playing him they just don't know <laughs> they just don't know it yet um but while this conversation is going on damon does hear mason lockwood come in the house mm. with tyler and he's yep. listening into their conversation and mason's really quizzing tyler about his rage issues mm. if he blacks out if there's a pattern say like you know once a month <laughs> only at night when there's a full moon yeah, yeah. it's like how is damon not literally picking up right here and there what's going on like the way he asks like once a night only on a full moon like it's like so unsettled that it's yeah. like come on i mean i know that like if you've lived 160 years and never and you're a vampire and you've never heard of a werewolf you're probably you not would, yeah even gonna be willing to believe it but it's like i don't know mason's pretty heavily dropping like the clues in this conversation but yeah whatever i guess but also by that same token i'm wondering why tyler isn't also piecing this together because i thought that too yeah i i mean you know he's so like aggressive and i guess that can kind of be chalked up to like teenage hormones but tyler's like yeah sometimes i black out i'm so angry like i go blind with rage which i feel like isn't really that normal i don't know i don't know i mean it's hard to say again with like the type of dad that he had yeah, and being true, like raised in a lot of the ways he did yeah. but tyler does acknowledge some of it because he does say like you know he gets yeah. angry typically over nothing which i thought was mm-hmm. really interesting that he could even acknowledge that like yeah even his like rage is like not over anything yeah um like the fact that he could voice that is like hmm it's interesting yeah a lot of self-awareness from tyler yeah surprisingly um so damon's getting some more clues there but somehow not figuring it out he's also the the scene for this is so good because he's like doing like the vamp hearing to listen in on this yeah and carol and him are still having tea yeah she must just be talking at him and he's like yeah fully not listening yeah fair i would too yeah um 
so Caroline is at the hospital yeah. still, obviously. Um, she's fully transitioned now. She is a vampire. Um, she realizes that the sun burns yeah. her. And then Matt gets there. He comes to visit and, you know, mentions she's not eating. And she says the food's gross. And he's like, it's mm-hmm. hospital food. But obviously it's gross for other reasons yeah. um, that she doesn't tell him. Um, and Matt basically is just saying, like, Caroline is being neurotic, but it's okay because she's cute. Oh, my God. And he's, he's, he's back. He's fully back to season one, Matt. Yeah. Like, he's literally just, like, constantly, like, kind of putting her down and yeah. being like, you're the worst, but I love you. But I still love you. So yeah. funny. But also kind of need a Matt the way he's like, you're neurotic, but it's cute. I'm like, yeah. I could use that in my life. Yeah. Don't hate it, but. <laughs> Don't hate it. But I do hate that, like. He's like, you're acting so crazy. Like, it's not that weird that she'd want to sit in the dark after being in a car accident. She's yeah. like, if she wasn't a vampire, she would be having serious, like, headaches she and migraines. Also, and, like, yeah, like, very upset, traumatized, all yeah. those things. Yeah, it's not that not weird to be that like, crazy. I don't want somebody running in here being loud, turning on the lights. Yeah, ripping like, open the curtains. Yeah, I yeah. definitely would be sitting in a dark, quiet room if I had been in a car accident and was yeah. probably concussed. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So, I don't know. Matt's just not getting it. Um, And so Caroline does freak out about the sun Mm -hmm. and the window and, you know, whatever. And so Matt leaves because he's just like, Caroline. I can't deal with this. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. she's being crazy. (laughs) She just almost died, but she's crazy. she's crazy. Um, Meanwhile, Damon and Mm -hmm. Stefan are... I think at their house and they're like yeah they're back at the Salvatore house they're throwing they're, little yeah. quips at each other yeah Damon um, asks if he's ever if Stefan has ever contemplated that the animals might fight back yeah one day. it's they a pretty good one together yeah yeah they're both going after each other about their squirrel versus sorority girl diet which yeah. I think is just really funny that they yeah. it's like such a good way to pare down their their eating habits yeah. the squirrel and the sorority are. girl yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and you know it's fun and Damon says that he likes it and that it's fun that they have this like weird tension because of the elena kiss thing yeah um and then the topic does turn to damon's emotions Mm -hmm. and Catherine, um and all of that heavy stuff that like realistically damon doesn't want to get into yeah so he turns the topic instead to kind of speculating about the lockwoods what they are they must be supernatural um but stefan doesn't really take it seriously he just thinks that damon is being obsessive that damon just needs a new thing to obsess over yeah relate to that i really relate to that one i was like yeah (laughs) same (laughs) that would be me i would be like this person must be a werewolf like there's nothing else going on in my life so yeah might as well this whole (laughs) yeah even though he's validated in the end he is validated in the end which i will talk about this more as this episode goes but at this point he really doesn't have like a ton to go off of yeah but it is like except that really unsubtle conversation the unsubtle conversation and again the fact that like tyler and mayor lockwood were both affected by the device that only affected vampires so it's like it is interesting there's something there um but of course right now there's just not enough so stefan's just like you're crazy (laughs) um and stefan says or damon says that he'll let stefan deal with Catherine since she came back for him anyway like damon's like yeah she's here to your profess problem. her love for you so yeah your problem yeah yeah damon's like that's a yp not an mp <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah you can deal with her yeah yeah he's instead just gonna like worry about this lockwood situation yep. yep um back at the hospital caroline mm-hmm. is getting ready to jailbreak um because yeah. you know they're not gonna let her out until the next morning and she realizes morning like yeah that's she not realizes gonna work. she cannot leave during the morning yeah, yeah. so she's got to break herself out while it's dark mm-hmm. um so she's trying to get ready she puts on her necklace from elena yeah. but of course it burns her because yeah. it's the vervain necklace which yeah i thought was a nice touch because i honestly forgot elena gave her that necklace yeah I, so, i've noticed it like yeah. a couple times because i've been surprised that she wears it so much yeah um, which i don't know i guess it's very like high school that you do wear your like um the, the necklace that your best your friend, friend gave, you. gave you. Yeah, yeah I it's guess a little that's like true. friend yeah. thing. Um, so she drops it. The nurse comes and picks mm-hmm. it up. Um, also, she notices before the nurse comes in, Caroline notices as she's like looking at herself in the mirror, she sees like her, the veins, yep. the vamp yep. veins, and her fangs start yeah, coming she's out. The fangs. Yep. Um, and when the nurse does come to help, Caroline basically compels her to keep quiet and like, yeah. you know, uh, just like stay calm as like what happens happens yeah caroline like fully just like fumbles into like feeding on a person for the first time but like does it perfectly perfectly yeah everything about caroline's start to becoming a vampire is so perfect and really sets up like how the rest of her vampire arc will be 
She mm-hmm. literally, like, yeah, she lucks into compelling something. Someone. Yeah. That's who I would want to be as a vampire. Caroline, <laughs> just immediately compelling, immediately yeah. feeding off of people. Yeah, yeah. she gets it. The yeah. girls who get it, get it. The girls who don't, don't. <laughs> exactly. Um, speaking of the girls who don't get it, actually. <laughs> uh, Elena, segue. Yeah, that was a perfect segue. Elena and Bonnie are running the carnival, which yep. actually is going, like, pretty yeah. successfully. But, you know, Caroline later will mention that they don't get the word fabulous. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, Bonnie tells Elena they're running out of Team Jacob t-shirts, which I thought was so funny. So good. Um, And Bonnie's at it again with the karaoke machine. She's like, it's not working. Like, we've got to get it fixed. You just know Bonnie was up there singing every song, (laughs) fogging the mic. Yeah. And she's like, we got to get it back working. Yeah, that girl's obsessed. I don't know why it comes up so frequently that Bonnie (laughs) loves karaoke, but it always comes up. Yeah. Which is so funny because they never make Kat Graham sing, even though she's like a singer. Yeah. It's so weird. I don't know. So um, they ask one of the carnival workers. What's his name? I don't remember. Carter. Carter. Mm -hmm. They ask him to help with the machine. And um, he, like, hits on Bonnie. But he's, like, a (laughs) full-grown man. He's, like, he looks like he's, like, 30 or something. (laughs) Yeah, I was thinking about this because not only is the actor, like, probably realistically, like, in his 20s or 30s, which, whatever, that's a common thing. Yeah. But... I was thinking about it. He's working the carnival. Like, he's mm-hmm. a maintenance person, I think. Like, he's yeah. fixing the machines. He, like, the youngest he could possibly be is, like, maybe 19. But realistically, yeah, probably, probably, like, like 23. Is 20 realistic. something. Yeah. 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 Bonnie, like, 16, 17. She's yeah. that age. So weird. So weird. Yeah, so he offers to go with her to help set it up and get it going. Um, and Elena is really cute. She's, like, encouraging it. Like, you know, yeah. like, go Bonnie. But it's, yeah. like. Alina. I mean, yeah. she's dating a 164-year-old man, yeah, so... She, she has bad judgment when it comes to the yeah. age your boyfriend should be. Yeah, so... Yeah. Whatever. But I'm glad she's excited for her. It's yeah. cute. Um, again, with the Lockwoods, Mason is digging around Mayor Lockwood's mm-hmm. old office when he's caught by Tyler, and he tells him that he's looking for something called a moonstone. Yes. He really tries to undersell the importance of the moonstone. Yeah. He's like, it's really old ugly it has no monetary value like, yeah he says that he's being so sus like yeah. yeah he's like it's some heirloom or something like yeah. someone like his grandmother gave it to his grandfather or something like that yeah why is he being like this can't he just say like i'm looking for this like well i don't I think know he's being so sus i think it's in part reaction to tyler saying that he's like trying to steal antiques to sell for money and yeah he, and, and mason's That's like true. oh i already did that when i was like 19 like yeah he's like i ran my trust fund ran out when i was 22 or something like that so yeah so yeah. it is like a little validated but of course we do know he is actually being like shady yeah, because a suspect of course it is a very important stone yes. that yeah theoretically has no monetary value to like a human but mm-hmm. like you can't tell me like well i guess klaus knows it's a fraud but like it does have massive supernatural yeah. value so yeah he's being shady he's like you know not willing to actually say what it is but he is planting the seed that like clearly this thing's like really yeah. important to me into getting it um and tyler's like yeah sure like i'll keep an eye out for it whatever yeah um, back at the carnival, Damon is being Damon, and he makes the bold choice of approaching Jeremy at the carnival for their little chat. Yep. Um, and he makes the and bo- Jeremy makes the even bolder choice of threatening Damon, <laughs> which he got too cocky from that conversation with Stefan earlier. Yeah, Stefan was like, "Oh yeah, you can kill us with a wooden stake," and Jeremy was like, "I oh, guess bet. I'll just <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I'll just go step to Damon the next time I see him." Yeah. So yeah, of course. Yeah, Jeremy's, like, kind of threatening him back. And he puts him in a choke. <laughs> Demon puts Jeremy in a chokehold, obviously. Yeah, but you're forgetting the funniest no, no. part. My no, I'm getting there. Part. Okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So, obviously, you know, he has Jeremy in the chokehold. And he has his hands, like, you know, around his, like, his neck. And you can see Jeremy's ring. And he's, like, <laughs> he pulls off the ring, which we don't see. But he gets the ring off. And he's, like, I'll shove this ring so far up your ass you really have something to choke on. It's pretty good. Damon is, like, really putting him in his place. But, no, that's not my favorite funniest part. Oh, okay. That's my best part. My favorite funniest part in this conversation is when Jeremy's (laughs) threatening Damon. And he says, I could blow the whole lid off this (gasps) thing. It's like, (laughs) stress. No, I could blow the whole lid off this thing. I I burst out laughing. (laughs) He's going to just scream 
the vampire in the town square like what is he thinking yeah i don't know also why is he saying like he's like a 1950s newsie he's like yeah, i'm gonna, gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, gonna blow a whole coat. lid off this thing it's gonna be on the top of the morning papers <laughs> Like, that's Jeremy to Damon in this scene. Like, I don't know where he's going with this. But it's so yeah, I funny. I really don't know what he's thinking. Also, yeah, he's going to be like, the vampire. <laughs> he's just going to scream vampire. Elena would kill him. It's so funny. <laughs> like, I, it's so hysterical that Jeremy thinks he can do this. And it, it goes, like, such a different direction by the end of the episode. So we'll come back to yeah. Jeremy and Damon. But I love their dynamic. It's yeah, I so do too. funny. I will say, I do really like... Jeremy and Damon as like friends and like yes. they sort of have and we'll get to this at the end of the episode but yeah they sort of have almost like a like brotherly or like uncle-ly yeah I was gonna say like relationship. A, yeah like an uncle nephew yeah. cousin vibes it's definitely like familial yeah it's definitely yeah. very familial and it it gets even better but this is the start of it where it's yeah. like it's, it's just hysterical. It's just really funny. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the big brother that Jeremy needed. He needs badly. Elena's always trying to take care of him, but Jeremy's the type of kid that needs a big brother that's gonna like put you in your place. Exactly. Constantly. Yeah, he needs to be like you know, hate to say it, but he needs to be put in a chokehold every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> yeah. What sibling doesn't need yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Um, back at the hospital, <laughs> it is of course dark out now, so Caroline can finally yeah. make her exit. Um, and she has all of her affairs in order. Mm-hmm. She is got the nurse covering up her bite with like a yeah. like a wrap of some sort or like a yeah, there's bandage. some sort of bandage thing. And she's like, if anyone asks, your husband's kinky. Yeah, <laughs> oh, so funny. Just tell people that your husband likes to get kinky. Yeah, like she's wild. She's got it all ducks in a row. Yeah, organized. Love her. Love her. Um, so she has, and this is when she says she has to go get back to the carnival because she yeah. loves Elena, but she does not understand the meaning of fabulous. Yes. Which is brilliant. Which, yeah. Um, She's so, right. Yeah, she is right. So back <laughs> at the carnival, um, Damon and Stefan are watching this arm wrestling yeah. contest going on. Um, you know, Tyler's doing pretty good. Damon's commenting like, oh, Tyler's really strong. Stefan's like, yeah, he's like a class A1 athlete. Of course, he's strong enough yeah, to beat all yeah, the he, kids in the school. Like Exactly. Yeah. Like Stefan points out and Tyler said it earlier. Like he plays three sports. Like he's always yeah, working course, out, exercising. Yeah, yeah. He was he was going to be everybody in his high school easily without yeah, the vamp or the werewolf course. thing like of course yeah. but then we do see mason jumps in to go against tyler and yeah. mason pins him which again he's pretty buff looking it's not like yeah. that it's suspicious older. he's like, older than tyler that definitely yeah. a 17 year old versus like a i don't know late 20s yeah, or like 30s say maybe type. 30-ish um although he's supposed to be like the same year as jenna so he must be like more oh, like yeah mid He's, late 20s yeah maybe like 25 26 um something like so that. but yeah, yeah so he takes him down easily so it's like okay interesting interesting mm-hmm. doesn't tell us much so of course damon's like we got to figure this out he volunteers yes, stefan he volunteers stefan of course which i love also people are cheering and damon is one of them but someone else like off camera is yeah. like cheers like go steph yeah go steph <laughs> that's our like that's our quarterback we love yeah. him <laughs> yeah which i don't think he even plays anymore no but... he played like one game yeah like, but people know stefan's like yeah. you know he's a little bit of an athlete himself so yeah. it's like fair to pin him up up there um, and they look pretty evenly matched for like, you know, a few seconds. Sec, they're like yeah. both, they're holding, they're both holding. Um, and then Stefan is, but Stefan also is like grunting the whole time. <laughs> like, hmm. like, I just want to know what Paul was doing in like there, the AVR room, like yeah. just doing that over there and over There are so many little like, um, like noises that they added to this episode. Wild. It's so <laughs> funny. I love when the sound engineers are just like, hee hee, we have yeah, some let's time. Have fun let's, with let's, it. let's just. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just throw some things in there. So Stefan's grunting the whole time that yep. that they're doing this. But then he does give up and let Mason, like, pin his hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and he goes over to um, to Damon to talk about it. Damon's like, you weren't even trying. Yeah. And Stefan's like, actually, I was trying. Yeah. Um, which means they were pretty close to evenly matched at the start there. I yeah. think, again, an important reminder here is, you know, Stefan's on his bunny diet. We do know he's one of True. the weaker vampires True. because of that. Um, but, like, they're pretty evenly matched. But yeah. Stefan does say, he's like... No, it's not vampire strength, mm-hmm. but it's definitely more than a human's like strength. Yeah, like it's it was supernatural, human. but it wasn't vampire strength levels. Yeah, um, which is really interesting. But then Stefan does start joking, like, "Oh, like maybe he's like a ninja turtle yeah. or a zombie or lol a, a werewolf. werewolf." Like, Damon, yeah, Damon's like, "There's no way." Like, yeah, there's no such real. thing as werewolves. Yeah, or, or combat turtles. Yeah, or combat turtles. <laughs> that too, and. 
Yeah, Stefan obviously is just writing it off, which I think is odd because he is the one who just arm wrestled him and he Yeah. He knows he's not human. Like, yeah, again, I think like it Damon's was normal in the earlier scene to be like, Damon, you're just obsessing. Yes, like maybe they weren't even affected by the device. It could have been any number of other yeah. things. Whatever. But Stefan himself experienced yeah. that the strength was like above human and was like, Yeah, eh, it's probably fine. Um, yeah. Damon, of course, is like, it's not fine. We got to get to the end of this. So he Ugh. compels Carter, Bonnie's a carnival hottie, to pick a fight yeah. with Tyler. And no matter what, don't back down. Yeah. Basically, like, make sure he fights you. Yeah. I don't know exactly what Damon's trying to prove with this. Just kind of ploy Tyler to display yeah. some super strength or something. I don't know, really. I don't think he knows what he's doing. He's like, yeah, he's like, we got to just bait him somehow. Yeah. Like, Let's yeah. get him to show how strong he is, maybe. Yeah. I oh, I hate this, first of all, because it's so terrible. Yeah, this it's is awful. bad. This it's is literally dangling him like a piece of meat of just, like, bait. Yeah. But, yeah, I think to what you were saying, I always wonder, like, what is his rationale here? Because he also makes it sound like he's expecting Mason to intervene. But, like, yeah. Mason's his uncle. Why wouldn't he intervene? Yeah. Obviously, he gets lucky and Mason, like... Yeah, <laughs> does he gets his, a full like, show out of this. Yeah, but. he gets a whole, like, display of the werewolf powers, but... Yeah, I, feel like I, I like it to was say, a gamble. Yes, I like to say a lot of times that Damon's so smart, and he is to an extent, but, yeah. like, more than anything, Damon gets lucky. Damon he has a hunch, lucky. and he just throws something out there, and people prove him right all the time. Yeah. Like, that's more it's often true. what, what uh, Damon's vibe is. Yeah. Um, and so... You know, they've, they've, they've set that plan in motion. We'll see what happens with that later. Yep. Um, but after he, he sets this in motion, um, he is walking around the school course, and he's confronted by a smoky-eyed Caroline. You um, know when she's got that smoky eye on, watch out. Yes, watch out. And Damon should have watched out because she tells him that she remembers everything. And yep. she relays Catherine's message of game on. Yes. And she goes to walk away. Damon kind of tries to grab her to, to see what she's like like wait whoa 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 wait yeah, a second what's going on um and she just kicks him to the ground and he's like laying on the ground and she stands there and she's like, you suck <laughs> it's the best <laughs> it's so good it's so like 2010 or like yeah, yeah whatever this power was. Yeah. yeah it's like you suck yeah snaps for caroline <laughs> so like for real like she yeah. killed it um and he deserved that let's be real he, he did deserve deserved that. that and a little bit more and if we're more. being real yeah um he deserves what he gets later maybe yeah, it's true. <laughs> Tyler is out in the parking lot where Damon's plan does unfortunately work. It does end up. It yeah. does set in motion, and um, Mason shows up to kind of save the day, just yep. as Tyler or as Damon planned, because Tyler's you know this this fight is being picked, and and Mason just inserts himself in the middle um, with some parkour moves. He's like yeah. jumping around the the parking lot, acrobatics, jumping like twelve feet off the ground. Yeah, which also. <laughs> We, I know, I feel like we talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the series. Mm -hmm. Like, the writers obviously didn't know exactly what powers they wanted everyone to have. Yeah. And how they wanted to show them off. I don't ever remember the wolves being able to, like, no. jump out of, like, like off the ground like this. Like, yeah, they can jump off buildings and stuff. And, like... They might be able Mason to. Mason is, like, off the ground jumping just, like, 12 feet. It's yeah. insane. It's one of those things where it's, like, the werewolves, honestly, even, like, with all the years of the show, it's hard to say because I feel yeah. like the, the rules of, like, when it's a full moon night are a little different than when it's another True. night, and we don't know where in the storyline we're at, really. Yeah. So it's a little... Well, actually, we are close to a full moon. The next episode is a full moon. Oh, yeah. Um, so maybe that's what's playing into that. Yeah. It's hard to really say. Yeah. Um, And so... You know, he inserts himself. He's got his glowing gold eyes. Yeah, he, the eyes do the change. Yep. yep. And Stefan, luckily, is conveniently. I don't know if Stefan was, like, ended up going along with it to watch this whole situation yeah. play out or what. Because he does stay in, like, the parking lot. And he watches this whole thing from afar unfold. Yeah, he's, like, watching from the bushes, basically. He's, yeah. like, binoculars out. Yeah, so yeah. now he's got no chance but to take this seriously. Because he's yeah. literally seen the evidence that Mason is not human. Yeah. Um, and you know nice stuff and does go up to carter, to carter after and, and make sure he's okay like, you're in yeah. the wrong place the wrong time dude it's fine yeah. it's fine he's just gonna go about his night confused yep um for a little while yeah because caroline caroline makes it outside you know to the carnival yeah. and like elena is trying to play everything is normal trying to play mm -hmm. everything is fine we're all human we're all good yep. and um 
she sees Matt, and so she goes to join him at the ring toss, and she throws the ring, and it breaks every glass yeah, bottle. It smashes the bottles. Yeah, like, literally couldn't even be possible as, like, a human. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she kind of plays it off, like, oh, they must have already been broken, LOL, yeah. like, it's yeah. fine, it's fine. Um, yeah. And so caroline hugs matt you know they're like mm-hmm. talking and she hugs him and clearly the temptation to feed on him is yeah. too high yeah and again good on caroline she's really getting the vampire instincts because she just runs away she's like yeah, i she gotta leave this situation yeah. um which was definitely the right thing to do and so damon on you know in another part of the carnival immediately is yeah. going to elena to tell mm-hmm. her what happened um yeah, he's he's rallied Stefan. He's he's got them both. They have they're having a little group meeting. They're yeah. like it's like in a Lark's classroom and a Lark is nowhere to be found these yeah. two episodes, weirdly. Yeah. Um <laughs> forgot about that. Also yeah. Jenna gone. Yeah. Yeah, people are just being written off these first two. Yep. Um but yeah, he does find them and he goes over like they're kind of like suspecting like what must have happened. Mm-hmm. Obviously Caroline didn't give them much info, but she said Catherine. So they're like, Well, two and two, Catherine. Yep. She did just put a yeah. And so Damon comes to the conclusion that, well, they've obviously got to kill Kath or Caroline. Yep. Because of based on what happened with Vicky, you know, this is only gonna lead one way. And oh, Vicky was conveniently killed the night of a carnival, so it's just <laughs> So yeah. it's just it's just Kismet. Yeah, it's, it's just gonna go down like this. We have to kill her. Yeah, yeah. It's poetic. Caroline will just be killed as a vampire at the uh at the carnival like a day after turning just like vicky yep um and it is really interesting to compare this episode to vicky's transition yeah. episode because it's only our second transition vicky was our first and like they could not be more different yeah they're already so different like vicky was i mean first of all she took a longer time to transition mm-hmm. she had the whole day where she was pretty chaotic and yeah. causing trouble but caroline has come on the scene she's already a full vampire mm-hmm. she's she's being like pretty normal like you yeah. were just saying she like knows herself enough to like stay away from matt yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah she she's, she's got she's a done lot nothing. better self-control than vicky does yeah. just as like a person definitely um and unfortunately for caroline you know they Stefan and elena are like that's not gonna happen no. we're not gonna do it of we're course. not killing her tonight yeah but unfortunately for caroline she ends up in the wrong place at the wrong time with carter of course and um you know they're talking he has a nosebleed unfortunately from the fight and it's just too much to resist and it's interesting caroline actually apologizes to him before she even attacks him like it's like again like the self-control she knows she's like run out and it's like i need to like i need to feed right now yeah and so she you know bites him she feeds on him cut away for a second yep um to bonnie and matt who are discussing how weird caroline is acting and yeah matt is like being annoying again about caroline just how she's neurotic and crazy which again she almost died <laughs> she literally almost two died. days ago she did die which he doesn't know but she yeah. did die she was literally yeah. near death yep. um so he, he's just being crazy um and Stefan is back at it again with the aggression. Him and Elena are running around looking for Caroline. Yep. And he, like, punches a random truck. Elena's like, <laughs> Stefan! Yeah, yeah they, he just, like, punches one of the trailers. Yeah, like, of like their- dents it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're talking about Caroline and Catherine and why she did this and mm-hmm. why this is happening. Like, obviously, Stefan's very upset over this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, like, both of them think it's because of them. You know, like, Elena's like, oh, Catherine's doing this, like, to me. She's doing it to punish yeah. me. And Stefan's like, no, he's, she's doing it to me to punish me. And I do kind of think both is true. Like, I think yeah. Catherine's just willing to kind of punish everybody. But obviously, they also don't know that there's, like, a whole bigger thing here of, like, yeah, she changed Caroline for multiple reasons. Yeah, um, I know. Not I've, just punishment. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I was thinking this where they were both, like, you know, she's killing she killed caroline because of me first mm-hmm. of all main character syndrome <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah elena and seven think they're the main character but no catherine has so many ulterior motives like, yeah like we were saying i think it was last season yeah if she wants caroline for the sun and moon curse yeah. oh it was in the it was in the special episode yeah yeah yeah, yeah catherine also wants to punish stefan and elena i definitely yeah. think that's also true but yeah and i think she wants yeah. to punish both of them um so yeah it, you know they're both just kind of like oh this is all our fault oh my gosh it must be because of me (laughs) yeah um meanwhile the lockwoods have left the carnival Mm -hmm. tyler and mason get in a fight because mason like is lying about what happened like tyler literally saw all of those things happen and mason's just like yeah like it's fine yeah nothing weird at all yeah he's also i mean of course 
a lot of aggression these first few episodes especially during the werewolf arc yeah but yeah also mason is like what you saw was being being mad i had to pull your punk ass out of a fight or something like that like yeah okay chill like yeah, he's trying to <laughs> redirect the attention and yeah like make exactly Tyler annoyed about that but tyler's like i know what i saw yeah exactly which i really don't understand honestly why mason wouldn't just tell him at this point like i know that a lot of the times the werewolves don't tell their family members about the curse because it's just a burden to know that if you ever kill someone intentionally or accidentally yeah. that will happen it's also like a self-fulfilling prophecy it's like yeah if you know it could happen I feel like it just makes it so much more likely that it will. Like, yeah. I don't know. So I get not wanting to tell him, but, like, at this point, like, Mason knows there's vampires there. Yeah, We don't know that he knows that yet, but, like, he knows that. And, like, you know, he knows, like, the situation that Tyler is in. And Tyler's already seen Mason being like this. Yeah. Like, he's not just going to let it go. I feel like at this point he would have been better off telling him maybe Probably. not the whole story. Like, don't tell him how you trigger or anything like that, but just be like, our family is cursed and like we're werewolves and yeah that's all i'm gonna tell you on that but like it's a curse like you don't want this to happen to you yeah um which i think ends up unfolding later so we'll get to that eventually but yeah. you know it, it's a it's a weird scene between them back at the carnival Stefan and elena are still looking for caroline and mm-hmm. Stefan does smell blood which yep. they follow the trail to that blood and unfortunately damon already got there first yes damon finds caroline she's crying over carter's dead mm-hmm. body and her face is just like covered in blood yeah and this really just gives fuel to like damon and what he wants to do and yep. you know it really is just like yeah i gotta do this right here right now yeah um, and he even tells her that he's gonna do it and that it's yeah. the only way that he can help her is to kill her yeah he's yeah he's like i'm gonna help you it's okay yeah. like and he has this stick he's like i have to kill you like yeah. I have no choice. It's my only way to help you. Yeah. And then she she's, of course, getting really upset. She's like, I don't want to die. Yeah. Oh, it's so sad. I feel so bad for Caroline. And yeah. like, she also, he's like, you're already dead. And she's like, don't say that. Yeah. Oh, poor Caroline. But yeah, he pulls her into a hug. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, he's acting like he's comforting her. He's like comforting her a little bit. And then he's raising the stake behind her back like a little, little like snake. a cartoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, before he can make the move, of before course. he plunges it in, Steph and Elena do show up at the very last second. Yep. And Steph and like rips and out of his hand. Him. They stop him. Um, it, it's so funny, too. And he does it. Dame's like, Steph <laughs> Like as if he just like <laughs> yeah. knocked something. You know, it's like, I don't know. It's like, full yeah. of my plan. No, it's funny. <laughs> um, and so, you know, they stop him. And... Uh, Caroline immediately is pissed mm-hmm. to see Elena. You know, it's again one of those moments yeah. like John where, yep. you know, somebody sees Elena and immediately associ- associates her to Catherine. Yep. Um, and Elena does say, like, you know, it wasn't me. Like, it was Catherine, which Caroline is just confused at this point, which is definitely understandable. Yeah. Like, she's like, no, you killed me. Yeah. Which this is going to play into something I want to make a bigger point about in a second. But Caroline has no idea, like, who yeah. Catherine is. Like, yeah. she, I guess she probably remembers her from when she killed her but yeah she has been told none of this world i feel like that's really important to remember yeah she knows nothing of what's going on yeah like dame she was with damon and she learned some of those like ins and outs of like you know she yeah. asked damon about like how you turn and how you yeah. feed and yada yada like she knows those kinds of things but damon didn't give her any backstory like yeah no as far as she knows elena killed her and called her Catherine. like yeah i don't like called herself Catherine. like it's just on it's completely confusing. it's completely confusing and it's understanding yeah. why caroline doesn't understand and is just immediately like pissed and this is such a great episode for candace who plays caroline yeah. i feel like she gets to show some like really nice range here and you know it's like so distressing and confusing and earlier she was very like confident and true of herself and like she mm-hmm. kicked damon's butt and like, yeah <laughs> i feel like it's a really good like range episode for an Definitely. actor um, yeah so she just wanted to call that out um and Damon does try to stay Caroline again. Of course. Of um, course. Because they're going to go, like, clean her up and, like, whatever. Get her out of the situation. And Damon, like, runs over to stake her. And Elena literally acts as a human shield to yeah, protect she, Caroline. Yeah, Elena steps in front of her. And Stefan is right behind Caroline. And mm-hmm. I noticed it, like, when they pull away. Stefan, like, had his arm around her waist or, like, something like that. Like, yeah. something comforting. Like, you see him pull away. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was really nice that Elena steps in front. Stefan's got the back. Like, yeah. she's fully protected. It Again, was just a this nice is one of those like Stelena is such a good pair moments yeah. because they both are just such protectors yes and like that is who both of them really are at their core is protectors Definitely. and so it it's very 
fun and interesting to see them both be that for Caroline at the mm-hmm. same time together. Because, like, as a pair, they're so strong at doing yeah. that. Um, especially with Damon is, <laughs> is the not protector. Yeah. Because, of course, he is. Yep. Um, and so, you know, they do stop her. And Stefan goes to take Caroline to clean up. And Bonnie shows up, of course, mm-hmm. at the worst possible second and is horrified by what yep. Caroline did. Of course, this was her little, this was her fair crush. This was her carnival yeah. crush. Yeah, she realizes Carter is dead. And she also, before Caroline walks off with Stefan, Bonnie was like, basically like, not you too. Like, she's like, yeah. oh my God, like they got to you. Bonnie's visibly upset, which this is what I wanted to make the bigger point about. Obviously, Caroline can glean from that that Bonnie also knows what's going on and knows this whole situation. Yeah. How horrible would you feel if you were Caroline and everyone you knew mm-hmm. knew all of these things? Like, it's one thing yeah. for Elena to be in the supernatural world because she's dating Stefan and she's yeah. Stefan's Damon's brother. But, and, and Bonnie is a witch, so she's in the world, but. Caroline doesn't really know that. She thought the witch thing was a joke. Yeah, that's true. So she wouldn't, I don't know, just for Bonnie to also be in on this and know everything that's going on. Cuts deep, yeah. That's hard. Oh, I feel she, for Caroline in this episode. Caroline probably feels how our girl Jenna is going to feel in yeah, like 10 episodes. Yeah, exactly. Exa- don't even get me started on that. That's my like <laughs> biggest gripe with the show. Yeah, oh, we're well, going to bring it up every single episode yeah. this season that so Jenna gets left it. out of the loop. And Caroline's in the same boat where it's yeah. like everyone around me knows about this yeah such um, a betrayal it is a betrayal and i think that this moment is also really interesting because it again kind of shows this difference of like bonnie versus elena mm-hmm. and like when they talked about giving caroline blood yeah you know how bonnie was like do it and elena was like absolutely not and then in this moment Car- elena's like huge protector of bonnie and bonnie's just or of bonnie of caroline yeah and bonnie is just like pissed about this whole thing and is like you know just like she's a monster like yeah. immediately is like ready to turn on caroline basically and it's just so interesting of how they reacted to yeah the giving the blood versus like the fallout of her coming becoming a vampire it's like elena's like yeah what's done is done like i'm gonna save her I know. I thought about that, too. And I also I feel like I've had a little bit of a different perspective on Bonnie thinking about just like just thinking about the show and like digging so deep into it than I have in like past rewatches. But I just feel like Bonnie is so unjustified here. She was the one like you were just saying she was pushing for her to be fed the blood. So Bonnie should have to accept the fallout. Like it was always a possibility that Caroline could get killed. Like, yeah, I don't know. Well, and I think that's realistically kind of like what that choice comes down to as well where like elena said no because she was fully thinking through the consequences yeah. and like didn't want to give caroline the opportunity to have killed somebody yeah. to have become a monster quote unquote right um whereas bonnie did not think about the consequences the only yeah. consequence she thought about was caroline dying as a human yeah and so that's where i think the differences here are like pretty obvious and yeah. telling about where they're at in their whole supernatural journey and understanding yeah. and you know we had a lot of people in our comments actually in episode one call that out that like the way bonnie acts in this scene is like unjustified it's like a yeah. lot of people were saying like these were scenes that make them not like bonnie because that's, of yeah how she acts no i know that's what i was almost feeling on this rewatch like i love bonnie i really yeah. do but yeah these this episode and then the whole thing with the dispelling the device where she oh, was yeah. like all upset about it when it was like bonnie yeah you caused this like i guess yeah i think you're is... right it's because she's so like new she's so green yeah but she's kind of like know. hoping for the best and then just not planning for like yeah. the worst i don't know um yeah this is definitely like we've said it i think in season one for caroline multiple times like bad <laughs> caroline episode yeah. we said it for elena there was like a really bad actually when vicky changed was elena's like really bad yeah. you know episode and i do think this one is bonnie's where it's just like eesh, not a good episode for bon bon like no. not one where you really look at her super favorably no um but a good episode for stefan he takes caroline away from this he takes yes. her to the bathroom she's just like sobbing she's a mess she's she can't even like wash the blood off of her face I know. and um he starts he's he takes like a paper towel and is like washing off her face for her while she's crying yeah. and this is the beginning of their friendship which i think yeah. is just such a beautiful friendship um we'll get into the romantic side of that yeah long down the line but i love them as like friends i, I think know. it's really smart the way that they have this sort of like lexi stefan play on on, on caroline yeah know? no i know i was thinking during this whole scene in the bathroom where mm-hmm. stefan is helping caroline clean up it's so precious it only gets better to me on a rewatch of mm-hmm. course knowing where their story goes which you know whether you ship sterile or not like 
we still love them as friends. I feel like yeah. everyone is in agreement. They are amazing friends and like yeah. Seven almost like a mentor to Caroline. Like, which is I think what so like good. makes a lot of people not ship them in the end because it's like yeah. why couldn't you just keep them as friends? Yeah. Um, we'll get there in a while, but for now, Stefan explains. You know that her emotions are heightened. Mm-hmm. He really calms her down. And yeah. He, and he tells her that you know that she's got to fight this urge to kill people and like the mentorship is definitely starting mm-hmm. right here and there. Like as soon as he finds out. Um, and so I just, I love that for them. I'm glad we yeah. took that off. Meanwhile, <laughs> on the opposite <laughs> end of the spectrum, um, there's no calming. There's, <laughs> there's no fighting urges. Yeah. yeah. Damon is working on taking care of the body, but Bonnie just yep. decides to channel all of her anger towards attacking Damon. She knocks yeah. him down. She covers him in gasoline and she sets him on fire until Elena literally has to stop yeah. her. Yeah, Elena physically stops her. Like, it's not enough for Elena to just say, like, Damon didn't kill Caroline. Like, this isn't his fault. Like, which, again, I think makes Bonnie's reaction that much more ridiculous. But I think related to, like, how she acted after the device whole thing went wrong, Mm -hmm. I think this is maybe a little bit of, like, guilt and maybe frustration with herself that she's, like, kind of just channeling toward Damon. She. She's, she's just angry at the situation. Bonnie is looking for someone to blame. In Definitely. This. Like, she just wants somebody to be responsible. And from her eyes, and she says this, everything is Damon's fault. Mm-hmm. And I do think, like, from a season one lens, especially from Bonnie's yeah. perspective, I can see how you would think that it is Damon's fault. However, it clearly isn't. Like, it, at least as viewers, even at this point, it's become yeah. clear that this is large in part Catherine's fault. It's definitely Catherine's, yeah. And then even farther from that, which we don't know yet, <laughs> right. Klaus's fault. <laughs> yes, Which that's is probably true. why, like, when Klaus does come into the fold, I feel like Bonnie is, like, number one hater. Like, Yeah, wants to she's the Klaus. most like, against him, yeah. I've actually really never thought about this before, but I do think, like, Bonnie at her core is just looking for somebody to blame. <laughs> she really is. No, I think she is. And I think... Yeah, I think it's sort of in the way that like Elena and Caroline want things to just be normal. I feel like Bonnie sees all of these things happening. And yeah, she's like, who who caused this change? Like, why can't we just be normal? And she's, yeah, like, yeah. let's get rid of the root cause and then we'll be exactly. good. Yeah. Which is why, you know, for now, in her eyes, it's Damon. Which, yes. and they become friends eventually because she realizes <laughs> it's not Damon. Yeah. Um, and then it's Catherine for a while. And then it's Klaus. Yep. And then it's you know, Michael and yada, 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 <laughs> and on yada, and on and on. Yeah. On and on how the chain goes. <laughs> Um, so, you know, for now, Elena has saved Damon's yes, life thankfully. again. Yep. Um, and, you know, Bonnie is like, she's going to have to deal with her rage in like better ways than just yeah. setting people on fire at the school carnival. Yep. Um, as usual, Stefan and Elena debrief after this. Of course. Elena is really upset about how the day went and she's clearly overwhelmed with all of like the mm-hmm. crazy stuff that happened. And she's like, I just want to go home and go to bed. Like, yeah, this was not the day that I wanted out of this. Yeah. It's really sad. <laughs> Um, also having the drama as usual, the Lockwood house, Carol tells Mason that she'll look for the moonstone because, mm-hmm. you know, Mason again asks her where it might be. And Mason apologizes to Tyler who acts like they're good. And then he sneaks off in his dad's office. Yeah. Um, where clearly he knows the hiding spots. He finds like, you know, there's like a trap door, a little like cubby in the ground thing. Yeah. The classic, like you pull up the floorboard yeah. and there's something underneath there. Yeah. yeah classic. And it has some, it, there's literally like a, like a vault, like a locked vault in there though. It's like yeah. not just the floorboards, <laughs> but yeah. the Lockwoods had to be a little fancy with it. Yeah. Which Tyler also somehow just knew. So yeah. yeah. Classic. You gotta like, when you have parents who hide things, you're like, you gotta find them. Gotta find it. Yeah. Um, even though you don't need anything with them. Cause most of it is like, it looks like important documents probably like the deed to the house yeah and that kind of stuff um but of course he does find a small box with a little oval stone in it yes that, i don't know if you had to come up with a name for it i imagine you'd call it something like the moonstone yeah it looks just like a little moon yeah, yeah the, the perfect i mean you know what it looks like the perfect yeah. little stone yeah a little white oval kind of um yeah slightly opaque slightly like you know yeah um and so tyler just pockets it he he knows what he found yeah he knows what he found he also knows he's not gonna give it to mason he definitely pockets it and he's like you know yeah. the context clues in the visuals of the show like you can tell he's not gonna give it to mason anytime soon oh yeah the clear Which, intention of just sneaking it into his pocket and locking yeah. the vault up is like yeah i'm gonna hold on to this until it's like the best for yeah me to use it. yeah which also again 
Mason should have just told him about the werewolf curse because if he had just told him, first of all, Tyler would trust him because obviously now he has no reason to trust him after Mason was so clearly lying to him and being so weird. Yeah. But yeah, if he had just told him, Tyler, I'm sure would have just given him the moonstone. He does he eventually. Would. Yeah, I was gonna say he does when he actually knows what's going on. He like gives a way yeah, over. It to yeah, us. he's like you can have anything. Yeah, so he he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mason made some wrong moves here for sure. Um, then at the Salvatore house, Damon goes for a drink. Classic end of episode yep, moment. Of course. Um, and Jeremy is sitting in the corner, <laughs> and he's like, "I wouldn't drink that if I were you. I put pervane in it." <laughs> Which, yeah, Jeremy also sitting there, hood like, black hoodie over his face. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, don't drink it. Yeah. And. He yeah. also has a steak, <laughs> oh, which yeah. he whittled himself, and he was planning to kill Damon with. Yeah, I, and he tells Damon this. Yeah, he tells Damon this. I love that Stefan gave him a little training session, like, what to do, and, and, and Jeremy automatically yep. weaponized it. He was like, yeah. oh, you got this really precious, hard-to-get vervain. Let me just dump it. <laughs> Damon's drink immediately. Yeah. For no reason. Yeah, that I'm going to ultimately tell him not to drink and he'll probably just throw out. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Damon is like, yep. sees that, you know, he has this steak. He was going to kill him. And they end up weirdly having a heart to heart about dead fathers and mm-hmm. vampires that they're vamp- or their fathers that hate vampires. Um, and at first, Damon is like a jerk about it. He doesn't really like. I don't know. He doesn't really, like, play into, like, Jeremy obviously being there wanting, like, an emotional discussion. Yeah. Um, but then when Jeremy gets mad and tries to leave, um, Damon does end up, like, kind of saying something about, you know, his father who also hated vampires yeah. and, like, dealing with that. And, um, you know, they then they bond over the whittling, too. How yeah. Like, they, well, back yeah, then they joke people a little. didn't know how to whittle, so. <laughs> yeah, there's a little joke. And, yeah, this is, like, the beginning of the, the familial relationship, the friendship that totally. I was, that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, I definitely really like the Damon and Jeremy pairing. And, like, while the first scene is, like, really good in, like, the funny <laughs> sense, they've got that, yeah. like, good, like, you know, the dialogue, the good, the good vibes, funny. Yeah. This is where it's, like, okay, they actually also really have, like, a good caring emotional understanding yeah. relatable yeah a lot in common yeah. yeah yeah weirdly they do have a lot in common yeah um then we've got the forbes house where matt is sneaking in to caroline's window to check on her and this whole episode he has really <laughs> been you know insulting caroline how she's this crazy He's person sick for this line you're about to say <laughs> yeah he just calls her a basket case he said i'd come to see if today's basket case is expired yeah <laughs> She almost died two days ago. She was yeah. released from the hospital like two hours ago. I come to see if today's <laughs> basket case has expired. Weird. I don't know if they ever actually say like what her like what was wrong with her, but she was in a car crash. I thought it was like internal bleeding or like a brain bleed or something. Yeah, they did say it was something yeah. like that. Really serious. Almost dies. Like yeah. only just released from the hospital. Yeah, if nothing Does, else, she just... has again a concussion, which like yeah is really makes it hard to be like. You know, you have a serious headache. You can't you be can't yourself. Be, yeah. yeah. No. Also, that thing with concussions where it's like if your personality changes drastically. Like, yeah. It's just it's like a red flag. Matt's like, <laughs> you're being a little basket case yeah. today, but it's okay because you're cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She so has annoying. all the symptoms of a concussion, like yeah. not being okay. Matt's like, yeah, at least you're still cute, toots. <laughs> Yeah, literally it's so weird which again in usual matt fashion he turns around and tells her for the first time that he's in love with yes. her he's, he's like you suck but i'm in love with you like oh my god he's wild but poor caroline she just always buys into it because they kiss and um while they're kissing caroline does unfortunately get the vamp eyes yep. and you know she is in control, she like steps yeah. away. She goes, or she doesn't step away. She just starts doing deep breaths. Yeah, we see her doing like the deep breathing that Stefan was showing her in the bathroom, and it like slowly starts to go away. Yeah, and she like, and we just levels kinda, out. Yeah, and we just kind of end there, which is nice because of course earlier, um, in order to control herself, she just like ran away. She just yeah. left. Um, but in this situation, she's able to just be like, take what Stefan taught her, and yep. immediately like you know use just that. relax. Yeah, um, and it works. Um. Then our last little moment of the the episode, one of my faves. Yes. Elena is in bed sleeping when Stefan se- sneaks into her room to wake her up and get her out of bed. And he takes her back to the carnival so that they can ride to the top of the Ferris wheel and have her cute little kiss at the yep. top that she wanted. And this really, truly has to be 
probably my favorite Stellina moment yeah. ever. It's definitely in their like top three, top five. I it's think so. So good, and it just shows again like how he listens to her and he understands those like small things that are important to her yes. and that actually make her happy. And you know. It- <laughs> He stares at her so lovingly when yeah. they're sitting on top of the Ferris wheel because she's just like laughing about. He like vamp jumps her to the top yeah. of the Ferris wheel, and you know she's just laughing about how like amazing that was and like looking around. And he's just looking at her while she's yeah. looking around, and it's she says cute. what? And he says it's so nice to see you laugh. Aww. Oh, they kill me! I they're, literally was they like have some good moments. I was literally like tearing up. I was like, that's yeah. just so like. Can, could you imagine if a man was looking at you as you're laughing? It was just like it's so nice to see you laugh again. yeah <laughs> thank you yeah like marry me right now <laughs> yeah um and then of course in usual stelena fashion it could never end there no, with a happy of moment not. um elena says it's never gonna get any easier is it and stefan says no yeah and then we get the title, the title screen, screen episode over yeah. um man i just love that that yeah scene, though. it's so cute yeah, it is a really great scene. It's a good note to like a pretty heavy episode. Mm-hmm. So for this episode, for our deaths, we of course have Carter, who is killed by Caroline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bonnie's little carnival man. Yeah, <laughs> which Sad. always her love interest. Yes. So I feel for her. Sorry, Bonnie, but yeah. he was too old for you. So he was too it's old. okay. Um, which we should have said this earlier, but this was probably also what made her more upset about the Caroline well, yeah, situation of course. too, that it was somebody that she was like interested Potentially in. Potentially interested in, yeah. To, you know. Um, next we have our, what used to be out of pocket and is mm-hmm. now things we would have done differently. And you know, the moment I actually was going to nominate, I don't think I would do differently. So I don't know if it works that well, but it certainly is out of pocket, which is Caroline making the nurse tell people that her husband is kinky. <laughs> That's a good one. I probably I would have done too. it differently, but I wish I would have thought of that. Cause yeah. It's, it's so funny. Also, once you say that people are going to stop asking questions, like no one's pressing <laughs> yeah. that further. So yeah. That's actually, yeah, pretty good on Caroline. I was going to say something I, well, mostly out of pocket, but something I also would have done differently is just everything Matt said. Like, calling her a basket case? Like, come yeah. on. I don't know. And then, yeah, yeah, and then turning around and being like, I love you. Yeah, like, Matt's the worst. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's definitely the most, like, out of pocket. Actually, the other thing I w- will nominate, and it's pretty much a person <laughs> the whole episode, is Jeremy just constantly <laughs> trying to kill a demon. Like, I'm going to blow the <laughs> lid off this place. Like, Yeah, Jeremy oh, was Jeremy. also very out of pocket. Yeah. I don't know if we declare. I don't a know if we have a winner. Sense. I think it's just let's say a Matt and Jeremy tie. Yeah, I, I'm good with Matt and Jeremy tie. Yeah, both of them. The whole episode are just like, what are you? Yeah, on what is about? going on? Yeah, related to that exact thing you were saying was out of pocket. <laughs> I also was going to say for my favorite quote. You already know if you've been listening to the episode, probably. But I loved when Damon was like, "I'll take your ring and shove it so far up your ass, you really have something to choke on." It's pretty good. Damon has a lot of good ones this episode. I honestly he wish does. I had written down more, but like, I know that is a slippery slope of like I could write down dozens of Damon quotes like every exactly. episode. Exactly. Yeah, it's you. If you don't pick one quote, it's like you're just transcribing the episode. Yes, literally. <laughs> Um, one that I wanted to nominate was Caroline saying you suck to Damon. I That's pretty that was, good. That's pretty good. It's just like good. a nice little memorable. But my like winner, like I have to say this is my winner, is Stefan saying it's so nice to see you laugh. Yeah. It's just so precious. Yeah. I'm good with giving it to Stefan because I'm sure we'll have a ton more Damon opportunities. Oh, there's a Damon opportunity every episode. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this isn't even, I think, in my like top 10, so... Yeah, and, and yeah, whereas like for Stefan, like that's definitely like probably my top few Stefan and Elena moments, Stefan yeah. quotes towards Elena. Like it's just such a great, like it's so nice to see you laugh. Yeah. It's such a sweet little thing to say. Um, finishing off with our like categories is the best song mm. of the episode. Um, there were a few songs for, for best song this time. We're at a carnival, there's music yeah. playing. Um, I had a couple nominees, which. My two nominees are songs that I liked that were featured in the episode, but because it's like a carnival, it's loud. You don't hear them often. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you had any nominees. I didn't really have any nominees. I will say I didn't really, like nothing really stuck out to me besides like one song. So yeah, probably the winner, the share. Probably. Winner. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'll go through my, my two nominees. Um, first is Animal by Neon Trees. Oh, you, that was what I was going to say. It was my winner. I don't know. It played oh, at the start of the episode. God. I was like, okay. Okay. Well, 
<laughs> Lock let's, it in. Let's finish this out. But after this, I have a bone to pick with you that oh, I'm going to be no. getting into. Um, oh, no. So, okay. So, Bonnie and Elena at the carnival, the planning, the, like, first mm-hmm. scene. That's when this animal by Neon Trees plays. Yes. And it's just, like, a good early 2000s song. And I do like the song, but yeah. I feel like it's, like, one where you watch the episode and you wouldn't even remember that it played necessarily. Okay, because fair. it's just, like. That's fair. It's just playing in the background. Um, which is the same for my second nomination, which is Currency of Love by Silver Sun Pickups, um, which plays during the Mason arm wrestling contest mm. thing. It's like, you definitely cannot even hear it because there's like so okay. much other noise going on. But I love it because that song was featured on the Vampire Diaries CD that I had. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, and I really do like that song for Vampire Diaries. But like, yeah, it's not even noticeable in the moment. You barely hear it. Um, but my winner, of course, I've been harping on the Stellana vibe. Is of course. All this time by One Republic when they're on the top okay, of the Ferris wheel yeah. and they kiss. It's such a it's cute moment. It's pretty iconic, yeah. And again, the One Republic vibes. They're always playing. One they're Republic. always playing One Republic. Yeah, I'm. I'm good giving it to that song. I. I did think about doing that as my fave, but. I don't know. I think I was just more thinking about the moment that the song kind of got lost in it a little bit for me. But I still really liked it with the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm good with that. Well, okay, good. So we'll make it... (laughs) I'm scared. We'll make it all this time at One Republic. But I told Rachel, I've told her like for a few weeks now. Yeah. I'm like, I have a bone to pick with you about best song. I was going Uh through uh all the ones in season one. And the first few, you know, Rachel's like nominating all the emotional (laughs) songs. She's like, oh, I just love the... I love the nostalgic moments. I love the emotional ones i'm always gonna Some pick the emotional one <laughs> and then half of the season she just flip flop like it was like episode 17 i picked the emotional one and you picked like the random song that the two <laughs> vampires are playing in the background and you're like i don't like picking all the emotional ones and she just flip flopped and then after that you just like never picked an emotional one again you were like you were like i like the the like rock and roll ones that fits with today's vibe because i just randomly picked like the most 2010 song yeah you were like yeah screw the emotional one let's I just think, go with the vibe i don't know if i need to defend myself here <laughs> but i i'm gonna go ahead and say yes because i don't even remember saying that so <laughs> i say a lot of things obviously we have a whole podcast but yeah. <laughs> um i'm gonna go ahead and say i think the season like starts out strong with a lot of good emotional songs yeah but then they get more into like their like bad vampire vibes like rock and roll yeah i it's interesting because i like both very strongly i think the emotional ones are that's what vampire eyes is like are you known for more so um but i do love the like you know damn our clouds killing somebody kind of songs so it is hard to choose between the two but i just think it's so funny that you came out the gate (laughs) so strong being like i'll always choose the emotional one i love the emotional ones and then like a random like 16th episode you were like yeah i don't like choosing all the emotional ones i hate the emotional ones (laughs) So it's just funny I that today perfectly you like ignored the like big emotional moment yeah. of the episode and we're like I gotta pay more attention to them. I think I think what happens is also I get caught up in the moment. Yeah. I, I feel like I have like a blinder on to the song sometimes. Yeah. I, I do think it's hard like when a song becomes so large in part like the end of the episode mm-hmm. especially it's almost like two in your face and it's like oh, i don't want to pick like the most obvious one yeah but i do really like all this time by one republic it's not a song yeah. i would like specifically listen to whereas like animal by neon trees i'll throw that on yeah why, why not? not yeah the nostalgia um but all this time it fits really well with scoring like what elena and Stefan are going through in that scene and it like does. the romantic you know moment and the sweet tenderness of the yeah. moment so yeah so all this time by one republic is our winner for the yeah. best song for the stelena moment i think that's a good one i'll go i'll, I'll shift back i'll do the emotional <laughs> song now yeah now you're gonna be back on that track for yep. a while okay good <laughs> Um, so we'll be adding all this time mm-hmm. by One Republic to our best songs of every episode playlist. We have a playlist where we always add the best songs. So it's got all of season one and now a couple episodes of season two in there. We also have a playlist for all of season one, all nominees, all winners, if you want to listen to that. Um, and we'll be posting clips and other things from this episode on our TikTok and our Instagram at the Ripper Diaries podcast. You can listen to the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and you can watch the video version on YouTube if you're not already. So join us next week, next Thursday, for Season 2, Episode 3, Bad Moon Rising. Yeah. Obviously, title tells us we're going to talk a lot more about the werewolves. Mm -hmm. And also, it's another, like, sort of road trip episode for Damon and Elena, but Alaric, of course, is third wheeling. Yeah. (laughs) Like he always does. Yeah, day trip to Duke. We'll come ahead for that one. Yeah. Get a lot more info, a lot more to break down there. So hope we see you next week. Thank you for joining us this week. Um, 
Bye. Bye. <laughs>